Hey guys, it's GED question of the daytime and we've got another graphing problem. It says find the slope and y-intercept of the equation of the line below, then use them to graph the line. So this is the fourth little video we've done in this series. So I'm going to assume you already understand that when the y is alone here, that means that you are in the slope intercept form of the line also known as y equals mx plus b. And this formula is on your GED formula sheet. You don't have to have it memorized. But what we know is when the equation of a line is solved for y, when y is alone, we can see the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is whatever number is multiplying with x. It's the m. And the y-intercept is whatever number is multiplying or dividing with x. It's the b. Okay, so I look at this, and I can easily pick out the y-intercept. I can see that since this minus is between the x and the 2, uh, this is adding or subtracting with x, and so my y-intercept is minus 2, or negative 2. That being said, I can't see the slope as easily. Sure, I see that minus sign, but the question that most students have for me is, what's the number? You know, the slope is not just negative. It's Negative is not a number. Negative what, you know? So... What you need to remember is that the invisible coefficient, that's a multiplier out front of a letter, is 1. Let me show you what I mean just real quick on the side. So let's start with something that's not an x so it's not as confusing. Let's imagine that we were doing like 5. So I want you to imagine if you took 5 and you multiplied by 1, what would you get? You would just get one single solitary 5, a 5. Same thing if you took 1 and you multiplied it by, like, say, 17. 1 times 17 would just give you 17. Well, then the same has got to be true of x. x is just a number, even if we don't know what number he is. And if I take 1 and multiply it by x, well, that's just a single solitary x. I don't have to brag about the 1. Now, you might be saying, Kate, but mine doesn't look like that. It has a negative. Well, let's check it out with negative 1. So if you took negative 1 and multiplied by 5, well, the 5 wouldn't change. The only thing that would happen is it would turn negative, negative 5. A negative 1 times 17, same thing. You know, I wouldn't ha see a number change. It would be the same number, 17, but now it would be the opposite, uh, negative 17. So same thing if you wanted to take negative 1 and multiply by x. Negative 1 and multiply by x, the x part wouldn't change, but whatever it was, it would be negative. So basically, there is an invisible 1 right there that you can't see because mathematicians are lazy. We write our answer as simple as possible. We're not going to write negative 1x when negative x would do. It means the same thing. But you should know that that means your slope is negative 1. All right, now that we have these two pieces of information, we're able to slap them on a graph. Remember that the y-intercept is the point where our line crosses the y-axis. So I come to this vertical up and down y-axis and I find negative 2 and I drop a point right there. Okay. Now remember the slope is a movement, rise over run we frequently call it, so it can be super helpful to write it as a fraction, right now it's a whole number, so I'm going to take this negative 1 and I'm going to throw it over 1, that's just one whole thing, you can turn any whole number into a fraction by throwing it over 1, and now I can very easily see the rise and the run. So I have a negative 1 rise, meaning I'm going to drop, and then a 1 run, which means I'm going to go 1 to the right. And there is my second point, and I'm able to draw my line through those two points. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other uh, math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.